So we got two keyboards today that we're gonna be reviewing from Echo. This one is the 3068, and this one is the 3084. A 65% layout from Echo, and this one is a 75% layout from Echo as well. These keyboards are pretty unique as well. My 65% keyboard has the Echo orange switches, and the 75% keyboard has the Gateron orange switches, which are pretty interesting. They're both tactile, but I do prefer one over the other, and you just might not guess what it is. Quick word from today's sponsor, cdkdeals.com. At CDK Deals, you can purchase genuine Windows keys for just $16 to get rid of that pesky activate Windows notification on your desktop. Use code TMT20 to save even more at checkout, and purchases are made securely through PayPal as well. After you complete your purchase, it will automatically take you directly to your account where you can see your new Windows key, and I would just copy it there. To use the Windows key you just purchased, go down to the search bar and type in activation settings and click change product key and enter the key you purchased. CDK Deals also offers other software and games as well for excellent deals, so be sure to check them out at the links in the description below. Thank you CDK Deals for sponsoring this video. Now both these keyboards are actually wireless as well and you can use them with up to four different devices. At the end of the video, I will leave a portion for you guys to take a look at both of the user manuals in English so that you can see all the different controls and whatnot. They're actually pretty simple, but most of the time, honestly, I just ended up referring to the manual because they don't have the uh, side print or should I say the front print on the keycaps to tell you where all the shortcuts are, which I don't really mind because it gives it a very clean look, especially because of the unboxing experience. Echo, they give you some extra keycaps that look like a particular GMK set that I can't recall at the moment, but I'll throw it up on the screen. Basically, this is like a Dice Up PBT version of that, and it comes on the keyboard pre-installed and with these little extra accents on the keys. I think it looks really good as well. Like the first thing that I said when I seen this keyboard, when they emailed me was that, wow, I really like the aesthetic that they're going for. Simple and clean, looking really good. But not everything is all sunshine and rainbow. So a couple of differences between the 75% and the 65%. So the 65%, which I do prefer to use, A, because the Echo switches, I like those a bit better than the Gateron oranges, like I said earlier. The 65% case does not have adjustable feet and it is just slightly too low for me to use most comfortably. It is very comfortable because I've gotten used to using a lot of keyboards without wrist rest and without necessarily adjustable height, but I do wish that the case was angled up just a bit more and it would be a bit more comfortable for me. But if it had adjustable feet, that would be perfect because then I would just use the adjustable feet and I wouldn't have an issue with it at all. Luckily, the 75% does have adjustable feet and 100% of the time while using the 75%, I did use those adjustable feet because it is the most comfortable typing angle for me and I just prefer it. Talking about the rest of the design of the cases of the two keyboards. So on the 65%, the case is all one piece of plastic. And on the 65%, it does appear to be a dual plastic casing where you have a top and bottom piece as well, which I don't mind at all. I think that they both look pretty clean. Another design difference that I wanna talk about real quick is just the casing. So on the 65%, it is all one piece of plastic. And then on the 75%, it is a dual plastic top and bottom casing design, which is fine. It looks pretty normal, just like any other keyboard. I just thought I would mention that but again I do like that the 75% has the adjustable feet. A great thing about both keyboards is that the USB type C connector is in the right spot for a proper gaming keyboard. So some of the differences between the Gateron oranges and the Echo oranges, the Echo orange switches actually at 1.9 millimeters with a 45 gram actuation force. The Gateron oranges activate at two millimeters with a 55 gram actuation force, which is not really that different to be honest, but they both do sound very different as well. And before we get to the typing test, I do wanna say that the stabilizers, on both of them, they're okay. They're absolutely not the best stabilizers that I've ever heard. I do kind of wish that this board was hot swap so that I could pop the stabilizers out and band aid mod and lube them and all that good stuff. But uh, unfortunately, this board is not hot swap. But one thing that you will notice is that the Echo Orange actually sounds a little bit deeper in pitch while the Gateron Orange sounds a bit higher pitch. Let me know what you guys think about the sound test in the description below and which of these two switches do you guys like the best?
Now in terms of the battery life and lighting on this keyboard, the battery life, uh, I really don't know how long it is. Like I haven't killed either of these keyboards yet. Yes, I have been plugging them in occasionally just to see how they perform like wired versus wireless. As far as I'm concerned, the battery life on both of them is really good because I left them unplugged for probably a week or so at a time. And the only one that's gotten low has been the 75%, which I have been using a little bit more just seeing if I really like those Gateron orange switches. And it does like this little blinking animation when it's plugged in and the battery is low. But otherwise by default, when you use the keyboard in Bluetooth mode, the lights are actually off and you have to hit function L to turn on that lighting. But otherwise, that's pretty much all I really have to say about these Echo keyboards. Like they're pretty basic, nothing really too crazy about them. At the end of the video, I'll have a little bit of a longer typing test as well, typing on the keyboards without the desk mat. And again, the instruction booklet as well. So you guys can see all the different functions of the keyboard, how to set up the macros and stuff if you care about that kind of thing. But I like both of them. They're pretty nice and they're not horribly expensive as well. I will say that I would peg both of these keyboards to be around that 90 to a hundred dollar price point. But the 3068 is about $110 and the 3084 is about $120. So they're not like, you know, insanely priced against each other either. Like they're only $10 apart to go up from the 65% to the 75%, which I think is pretty reasonable, but I would definitely be a lot more comfortable recommending both of these keyboards if the Echo 68 was about $90 and the Echo 84 was about $100. I think that would be a lot more fair. Now, between the switches, if I was to pick a tactile switch, I would always 110% of the time go with the Echo orange switches if I was to pick a tactile. I like those quite a bit. And I was surprised that I didn't like the gather on orange is better. Echo, whoever your switch supplier is, they did a really good job. Shoot me an email, like tell me who the switch supplier is. Is it Kale? Is it Kale? Because they feel and sound really good for stock tag tiles that aren't lubed and they're relatively smooth as well. And I really just enjoy the sound. But that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a like and subscribe if you guys are new as well. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with all the latest stuff. Too much tech. Look out for my live streams on Twitch as well, where I usually notify you on Twitter. So give me a follow. And uh, yeah, hyperactive on there. Super fun reviewing these keyboards. Ton of content coming up. Stay tuned. I will see you guys in the next video.